breath of that song, but no, <laughs> turn to number 223, Arise My Soul, Arise. Father, have a father. 
Good morning. How you doing? Well, thank you. Well, I'm doing okay too. <laughs> um, Chuck, open us up in prayer here this morning, will you please? Um, <coughs> Steve handed me a, a missionary letter, <coughs> excuse me, this morning, and as you know, on the 28th, uh, Jamie Homan went home to be with the Lord, <coughs> and his wife, uh, pardon me for that, his wife uh, wrote, us, wrote all the churches uh, update, and thank you, <coughs> I'm sorry, this letter's from... <coughs> Andy Grant, their pastor in Alabama, <coughs> and uh, it appears that uh, they're returning to uh, Rome, and uh, that uh, after prayer and contemplation, their sons uh, have surrendered to take their father's place in the ministry. They've been working there for years. <coughs> I remember when they first candidated here, we went out to lunch with them, and uh, they were teenagers at the time. Anyway, Jason, uh, Jacob and Caleb have surrendered, and the pastor says you actually get five missionaries when you supported the Holmans because everybody was involved. <coughs> so, I, I, again, I apologize. He said, I deeply appreciate your faithful support over the years and I believe it be a wise investment uh, that would pay eternal dividends to continue to support them. I've talked to the pastor. The pastor's in agreement with that, and he will bring that up at the appropriate time. But those are your missionaries to Rome, Italy. <coughs> and they're carrying on. In, pardon me. <coughs> okay, I just wasn't going to say that we were without the proper stuff. But as Steve said, the, the family, the, the Homans are budgeted for support throughout this year, so um, anybody can tell you no better than Vicki what that means, so, you know. Anyway, today is Debt Reduction Sunday. I've seen the little critters running up here dropping their dollars in the, in the little house, and that's a good thing. It, one, one thing it does is teaches them to, to give of their money. I remember when we were taking up money for a uh, Dave Spurgeon, uh, Eddie Redding and I were at, uh, at Spurgeon's house and his little granddaughter came up and she had six $1 bills wadded up so tight in her hand and she was sweating. She was going, Pop, Pop, I want to give you this for your new motorhome. And uh, watching her do that was a blessing. I mean, it teaches them early. So, uh, Shirley put out another email yesterday about the Sunday school program, and they have teachers for certain things. They're still looking for a couple, I believe. But if you have an interest in that, see Shirley, and she will, uh, I'm sure she'll put you to work. Does anybody have anything else? Um, yes. All right, next Sunday there's an event meeting and a Christmas play meeting right after church by Elise. The 24th there's going to be dinner on the grounds. And the 21st of October is a Jesus festival? Yeah, it's a following Jesus. Following Jesus, okay. The 14th is what? 
Okay. And the 14th of October, they're going to take the kids to the pumpkin patch. Did you get all that, Sherry? Game night. All right, are we going to have a sacrificial burnt offering, or are we going to bring food for this dinner on the grounds? Or? Okay. All right. Uh, does anybody have anything else? <coughs> I know we've been in church. I've been in church for two and a half weeks now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is it pool? Jewel. Jewel. All right, that's Diana Jewel and Donald Israel, correct? Okay. Anybody have anything else? All right. Um, had a lot to chew on last week. And uh, some good stuff. I just, you know, you keep cookies loaded to shelf, everybody gets to eat some. And I'm, I'm a ground scavenger, man. I don't, I don't need them. If it's more than one syllable, I'm, I'm in trouble sometimes. But keeping that in mind, we've got the pastor that is um, going to be preaching to us this morning. You want to keep him in prayer. And we've got an offer, and we're getting ready to take up. And uh, Brother Jared, would you pray for the message and the offering, please?
236. Amazing Grace. Just wore out. <laughs> well, that's a good thing because it ain't no good anyway. And uh, but boy, what an encouragement that message! I think Thursday night he preached on the Holy Ghost of God and how we need it and how we are, as Bible as Baptists, we're afraid of that. Shame on us. We need him. We're doing things in the motions of mechanics. There's no power in it. We need the Holy Ghost of God on us. Yeah. Amen. tried, convicted, and sentenced to die for a crime no one understood, yet they shouted, crucify. Pilate said, one shall go free, so which man will it be? They cried, Jesus has to die, he was guilty of loving there was no hope that we knew. There was no legal ground. Yet God's precious holy land was nailed to a tree. If tender mercy was his only prize, well, that grace could be yours and mine. Then Jesus was guilty. They thought they'd sealed his fate, but holy destiny was calling him to that hill far away. Pilate 
said, Behold the man, I find no fault in him. If they could have understood, he was guilty of loving them.
the great exodus. <laughs> well, what a blessing last week was. I appreciate the attendance. I honestly do. Um, but more than that, I'm glad God showed up. Um, Mark is not the everyday person you want to come here preach. I'm just being honest. Mark is pretty tough. Uh, you come in with sugar britches on, you're going to walk out with <laughs> That's just Mark. But I know Mark. I love Mark, and he, he's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to help you. That old boy was rougher than a corn cob, I'm telling you. When he came, Miss Vicky, when he came, him and D, he knew nothing about God. Almost dared God to do anything. People look at him and say something to him, say, buddy, that's his favorite expression, buddy, I'll thump you. <laughs> and he in love fighting too. <laughs> but God got a hold of his heart. Psalms 51 this morning, if you would, please. I've changed my message three times this morning. I've um, gone through some old age crinks, I guess, I don't know. Anyway, um, I, I love Psalms 51 because it shows a couple of things in there for you. I, you know, one of the things that I see that I saw this past week, and obviously we had visitors and we had a great attendance, and uh, we were able to take care of Mark very well. Uh, I think Steve said the total amount come in was right at 5000 But he's been down, hadn't been able to preach. And uh, we send him a little bit of money, and a couple other churches do, but, uh, I mean, it's just like you try to take yourself out of the circuit for about three or four or five months, and you can't go and preach. No checks coming in. Uh, you've been banging on the, ca the, the, the cabinets trying to get something in there. But I like Psalms 51 because it, uh, it's got a great story to it, and uh, it shows me that uh, you think you're getting away with something you're not. <laughs> I, I sum it up like that. David, you know, watch Psalms 51. Have mercy upon, verse 1, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Why well, ask for it? <laughs> I got a little note next to it. Well, you're seeking mercy, are you not? Verse 2, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. Now David had a right to have joy, did he not? I mean, God, chosen of God, God, you know, David killed 10,000, Saul, I mean, Saul's after him, but, you know, it's like the world. Saul's like the world being after somebody. You're trying to live right for God, and they get sort of upset because God's blessing you, you know what I mean? You're walking around and what used to make you you know, frown, now you're smiling about it. Well, okay, God's will, that's what he wants. Praise the Lord, he knows what he's doing. And then verse 4, he says, Against thee, thee, uh, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest justify when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. And then he goes in verse 7, he says, Now purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me let me go back to this. Make me, um, verse, verse 7, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to bear joy and gladness that thou, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide my, thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart. Amen? A lot of people need to ask for that. I I do it quite often. Um, now, look what he says. Renew, not a spirit in me. What does he say? It do well, amen, for us to have the right spirit about things. Amen. Well, you know what they, I, 
I, I know, I know, but how many times have you done it to somebody? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Okay, look at me like that. Create a clean heart, and, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away, and that's what I don't want from thy presence. Father, we love you, and we thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for the week we had for the... Uh, Blessings. I pray you'll help Brother Mark. I told him today that I'd be praying for him, God to use him up there. And I pray, God, that you'll bless and God in that. I pray you watch over his family, Lord, as he's away. And uh, Lord, that you bless in this day, that uh, God will get something done that will glorify you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now, I literally just scratched some notes down. Um, I, can, I can look at David in David's life, and say, you know what, I can, um, I can sort of sympathize with you, buddy. I mean, David is that typical man. And if, if you want a title for this message, Billy, uh, it's the joy of your salvation. Now, see, people going around say, look what David did. He lost his salvation. Well, in the Old Testament, I guess you could, but in the New Testament, you can't. Why? Because in Colossians, the Bible says you're sealed unto the day of redemption. God put a spirit of God inside of you. But you can lose a lot of things. You can lose your health. You can lose money. You can lose all kinds of things, your friendships. But you can't lose your salvation because it wasn't yours to give. And you didn't earn it. He paid for it. I give unto them what? Ben E. It's a gift. And God's not an Indian giver. So I, I want to talk to you about your joy. Uh, Christians, are you saved this morning? Amen. Then you ought to be smiling. You ever say, Jim, I'm happy. My grandson does that to me. He says, I'll do it, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> you, you don't believe some of the words that come out of Joseph's mouth at times. No, they're not bad. I mean, it's just Joseph, he grumps and gripes just like his mama. <laughs> <laughs> he got it honestly. <laughs> but Joseph is a blessing to me. You guys know I love him to death. But um, I think there's a lot of things you can lose. But the thing you can't lose, the thing that sort of excels or lifts the Lord up in your life is when you keep your joy. Circumstances are going to, I've told you a hundred times, you're either in a storm, coming through a storm, getting ready to go out of a storm or getting ready to come back in another one. Life is about storms. You go through storms all the time. It's how you handle your storms. Storms are designed for something, to strip things away. It's, it's ridiculous what's happening in Hawaii. I mean, that's not a storm. That is a massacre. Man, my goodness. And, um, I mean, what's people, how many people, over 150 people missing? I would assume that, you know, they're somewhere else. <laughs> I hope they were saved. Amen. But uh, David comes up here. Now, this is a hand-picked man. Amen. Did he not? Didn't God hand-pick David? Wasn't David a little boy? And, and uh, Samuel was there, and he said, come on. Uh, he said, no. God says, I'll take that one right there, that little one. He wasn't the, and can I tell you, you wasn't the one that everybody would think, well, what do you got to be happy with? You really don't have much. Yeah, but you got God. It's not about material things. It's not about, you know, I talked to Melissa the other night. Bless her heart. You need to pray for Lou and Melissa. Um, but, you know, she's battling the weight, and he's, you know, they don't know what everything's going on. But you know what I noticed about Lou and Melissa? They still are smiling. You know, Lou come up to me and said, probably not supposed to say, he looks at me, he says, uh, hey, partner. I said, yeah, Lou. Lou and I used to go buy cars together. He'd, he'd tag along with me. He just enjoyed the ride. And he would help me because he was bigger than me. Nobody's going to mess with me. So. But, but he said, uh, I don't know how this thing's going to turn out, preacher. Would you do my funeral? I felt honored. But you know what I noticed about him? It didn't get him down. You know what? He knows where he's going. He knows the one who he trusted in. And you know what? Adversity is going to come in your life as it did in David's life. But you know what David didn't say? He didn't say, give me my salvation back, did he? 
He said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Have you lost your joy? I mean, listen, if somebody was to take a portrait of you, would they have to wrinkle up the, the paper to get a smile out of you? I mean, seriously, what do you have to gripe about? I, I mean, I told the Lord, if you're gonna if you're gonna take me, and my wife don't like me talking like this, but if you're gonna take me home, take me home before the insurance runs out. You think I'm kidding? I told the Lord, man, it runs out next month. They, I won't have any uh, life insurance. And I said, Lord, if I'm gonna die in January, what's a couple months? Bring it back. Get me out of here. It'll last her a month or two anyway. <laughs> you don't die, friend. You start living. <laughs> I hope you get a hold of this. You start living. You don't, well, preacher's dead. No, I'm up in glory. I'm with him. Amen. I know whom I have believed in and persuaded he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. One of these days, you are going to go and I'm going to go and maybe by the rapture, and I hope it is, but if I die and go out of here, I don't want to go out moaning and groaning and griping and grupping up. I want to give him a testimony. I've got the joy of the Lord in my heart. I watched an old preacher years ago. He's a red-headed preacher. He used to come and preach. For Doc, I don't recall his name, but Chuck, he was, uh, he was a pretty spiritual man. He was out in the desert riding horses with his son, and he had a heart attack, and he felt one coming on. And Miss Vicky, he used to come there quite often, but he was out there riding a horse, and he, he told his son, you need to get me to a, an emergency room, get me to a hospital. I'm not doing too good. Well, he, they put him in the hospital. You know what his main objective was? He wasn't going in there, well, are you going to help me? What are you going to do? I'm not telling you, you know, when, he, when death comes in your face, start grabbing it and hold on to it. But I'm saying, listen, your testimony still, it should be your testimony. Christians sit there like, man, you're alive. You're not dead. you got life inside of you. You've been S-A-V-E-D. Your sins are forgiven. You have a Savior that loves you. He's got the book that gave you the promise of God. Well, what else do you need? Well, you don't know what I'm going through. I know you don't know what I'm going through either. But that old boy said, son, get me there. And he gets, it, gets him to a place where they can get in an ambulance and gets him there. And he goes in there and he starts looking around. His son says, what are you doing? Dad, and they come there and get him before he can talk to him. And they get him, put him on that wheelchair, get him in a room. And he goes in there, and his, his dad's looking up like this, Andy. He's looking around. And is it him, Lord? Is it him? Is it that guy over? Is that nurse there, Lord? So said, what is he doing? Lord, you got me here for a reason. I'm not worried about death. I'm worried about is somebody going to miss you? Is some, in my testimony... I want to tell them about the one who died for me. Listen, if I die, I, lie, I live. I don't die. I go on with him. But somebody in here needs to hear the... I'm just telling you, look, don't walk around with your face drugged down on the ground. Have God's joy in you. David had did some things back in Samuel, and he had messed around. He got a hold of Bathsheba and messed that thing up. But look, look. David is going around, restore unto me the joy. You know, I'm going to tell you, sin will steal your joy. Hey, well, I don't know about that. Well, you're his workmanship, aren't you? A, every Christian should have salvation. If you're a Christian, you ought to have it, unless you're trying to do it on your own. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done according to his mercy. He saved us. Isn't that what it tells you? Well, where's your joy? David went in there, and David, look what David did. You, you, you read him. What was that in Psalms? Uh, Samuel, they, uh, Ben, Second, Second Samuel. You find David in there, and he sees Bathsheba. You know what happened? Idleness with David caused David to mess up. Be busy about something. Witness to somebody. Give them a track. Get in your Bible. Study your Bible. But Chuck wants to start school up again. Get in those tapes and study something. Do something for God. 
People have got it a lot worse than we have. Why? If you're, how many here are saved this morning? You couldn't go to hell if you wanted to. Now, let's, get, let's focus it. Oh, the preacher died and what? No, the te- preacher ain't dead. I'm up there. I, Lord's probably got me a long list there. Like, preacher, I need to talk to you. I, I mean, really, I, I know the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin, but we're going to have to deal with you a little bit. But I'm glad that I'm saved. I don't want to lose my joy. I don't want people to look at me. What's wrong with you? You're trying to call attention to yourself. Hey, you are saved. You got eternal life. Been around Mark too long. In Psalms 51, he talks about the joy of the Lord. You got, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my feet. Where? <laughs> When I'm so happy, so very happy. Joseph sings that song. And he has a smile on his face when he does it. I'm so happy. <laughs> hey, you want to, like a child. Anyway, David gets in there. Now, what causes you to start losing your joy? You don't spend time with God. What causes? There's all that cause and what you call it effect, right? You spend time in that book. That book will clean you up. It'll straighten you up. Amen. Uh, Ben gave you a lot to think about this morning. And I would suggest it didn't take 10 minutes for him to get that. You got to spend time with it. You got to love what you're doing. You got to love what that Bible's showing you. Dr. Ruckman spent, what, 60, 70 years in that book? Brother, I'm just trying to tell you something that we walk around and we see Christians arguing, grouchy, and griping, and groaning. What do you got to gripe about? What is it you got to complain about? Has God been bad to you? Has God been good to you? Has he been better to you than you deserve? Then say, hey, thank you, Lord. You're walking around, you know what? Come on, get saved with me. You could be just like me, I mean. I'm I'm miserable, I'm unhappy, and I don't like life, and all. Well, go tell the Lord, take you home. Amen. (laughs) I'm just trying to say, if David, now David in the Psalms, David wrote the Psalms, and David in there, what's he trying to tell you something? Hey, you can mess up, but there's a path to get right with God if we confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have a Savior that can wash you in the blood of Jesus Christ. That sin is to gone. The only one that will present it to you is the devil, not, not God. God's not going to lean on you. You put it to him and gave it to him. He took it. Wake up. Stand up. Quip yourself like men. Here's David. He's going into trouble. The Christian in his joy. Because real joy brings real redemption. Well, I tell you what, that's the greatest thing. When you got saved, I remember leading Randy to the Lord. Say, he was in church. I know. He knows too. But there's a difference between religion and salvation. There's a difference between denomination and salvation. Well, I'm a Baptist. Are you a saved one? (laughs) Baptists don't save you. Salvation is through the blood of Jesus Christ. God's Son cleanses us from all sin. David talks about joy. In Psalms 32, David wrote um, a man that is really happy, whose transgressions are forgiven. That ought to put a smile on your face. The devil come up and point in your face and say, you know what you did there? Yeah, but I got it under the blood. I went to the Lord and bowed my head. <laughs> I'm telling you what, what a blessing that is. I went in September 21st, 1975. This month is, will be my, figure it out, 25, 49th birthday in the Lord. I went in just as lost as an Australian kangaroo. I went in there and listened to that preacher preach, stick his finger out like that, 
looked like a double barrel shotgun sticking me. I looked at the old boy, I said, what's he doing that to me for? He said, he ain't doing that to you, he's doing it to me. I said, he must have wide fingers because he's catching us both. I laid in that, sat in that pew and wiggle wormed back and forth. And the devil said, you go do that. It'll mess up everything you've ever had. No relationship will be with you again. Your friends will, not, uh, will get away. Let me tell you something. If you're saved and your friends don't want to be around you because they're lost, you don't need them. Get you some new friends. I, I said, get you some new friends. Because they ain't your friend. And I'll tell you something, you're not their friend, not showing them Jesus Christ and you, the hope of glory. Because real joy brings real redemption. I didn't say you won't be unhappy. I said you still have joy and the confidence that knowing that you're going to heaven. You know what David was? David wrote the book of Psalms. David's writing this. Christ lifts us out of the miry clay and sets our feet upon a rock and establishes our what? It redeems, according to Romans 3 and verse 23, Isaiah 53, 6. We are, we are sinners. What did David do? David went in there and took Bathsheba. Everybody knows that. Everybody knew exactly what he did. How about the Philippian jailer in Acts chapter 16? You know what he saw in Paul and Barnabas? The, 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 the jail's open. Can you get the picture of this? The jail's open. They walk out and, and you know, the Philippian jail is getting ready to go. Well, why? Because he was going to be killed anyway. He was going to do it for himself. And Paul said, do thyself no harm. We're all here. He ends up getting saved. And thou shalt be saved in thy What's the understanding of that? If you're saved, it ought to drip off onto somebody else. It ought to be a concern in your heart about your neighbor, about your relatives, about your friend. I, can I tell you, even the people you don't like, you ought to be praying for their soul. Amen. Amen. Like you say, amen. Amen. Mark says it for himself. Amen. 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 He's a little bit louder than me, though. I told him he's uglier than me, too. Y'all aren't laughing about it. The Samaritan woman found joy in John chapter 4, verse 1 through 14. The Christian finds real joy because we're bought into a relationship. The greatest joy that is, is, is in doing the work for God. Once you get saved doing something for God, it's just you, you never, Doc couldn't, he, you couldn't go up to Dr. Rubin, I read your Bible and your Bible and your notes and your Bible. He would start getting rid and get antsy, get away from me. I mean, he wouldn't say get away, but he'd back away. Pam used to have to grab him here. Remember, he'd go out that door. David Turner would be here, and he'd grab Doc's stuff, and out the side door, Benny would go. So what, he, just, he don't want people pumping him up because he, he said, I'll start believing that I'm good. And he said, I know me. I'm not much, but I am saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I don't want to lose my joy and, and start losing my testimony around people. I want them to see Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory. This is what David said. Hey, David didn't say, hey, give me my salvation back. Restore unto me the joy that I once had. Man, sin will steal and sap your joy from you. You need to do that. You need to make sure. Listen, I'm not, I don't care if you go back in the bathroom and get on your face before God. I'm not here to beat you up to get you to the, to the altar. What I'm here to try to tell you, don't lose your joy. People, when Mark was preaching, was excited. I was excited. I'm not suggesting that you have to be excited when I'm preaching, but you ought to be glad that you're saved. You ought to have, your, your face ought to be the one that's showing that, hey, I've made peace with God. I've got something that Ajax won't take off. Here's David. He's involved in something wrong. Lives are bound together when you come to him. A Christian has joy of salvation, has new responsibilities. 
David blame, became the king of Israel, God had something for David to do. Can I tell you, God has something for you to do. He didn't sit, save you to let you sit there. He didn't save you so you could say, well, I was in church Sunday morning. That's all I need to do. No. If you were in Sunday school, you would have gotten a lesson. He wants you to grow because you know what? He wants you to propagate the gospel. You don't. <laughs> People think, well, I'm not a preacher. Yes, you are. You preach the gospel by giving out a track. You preach the gospel when you tell someone about what Jesus been. We're all preachers. You mean we got women preachers? Well, I reckon if she's saved. <laughs> you never had a wife preach to you? Oh, y'all got quiet. The women go, that smile. You know. Brethren, David lost something, and he knew he did it. And he said, I want you to restore it. The things that I got to, the things I got into, I need it back. I can't exist. Brother, I've been out there and did that mess, and I'm telling you, ain't nothing like when you bow your head and say, Lord, I'm unworthy. I'm so unworthy. I don't deserve you to give me another chance. I don't deserve anything. And the Lord said, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanses us from all sin. It's under the blood. Go and sin no more. David saw his sin flash before him. You didn't have to ask for your salvation back, but you did have to ask for the joy of it back. Do the things of God still bless you? I don't know about that mark. That mark is tough. No, you're just a little sissy. Oh, you scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites, you make. Who said that, Ben? Twofold, the child of. You want to listen to the Lord preach to you? <laughs> you're getting some wild looks. The Christian may lose the joy of the salvation. I got a note that says David did, Demas did. You don't have to let, you can lose your joy, but you can get it back. Because David said, restore unto me the joy. You want your joy back? I noticed the choir when they get up. You know what I've noticed about you guys when you get up here and sing? Manpower wise, women power. You don't have as big a choir as you used to have. But God is on it. You know who told me that? Mark McGahee. said, good night, brother. That thing, Miss Betty, wherever she, did she not come today? With those ladies the other night, what a blessing. I didn't, I didn't even know you all practiced that. I had no idea. I'm supposed to know everything. What would you all hide that on me for? How would you get <laughs> You know what? Look at chapter 51. Look at verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. You know what David's saying? I got to have it. Look, there's a lot of things I can lose, but I got to have him. I got to have his joy. The thing I'm finding about the older I get, the more I see doctors. It just seems like Jim says, well, here, this doctor here, that doctor here, this doctor here, that doctor. Good night, man. My wife, it took four months for me to get a, a nuclear stress test. You know how long I was in that thing? Fifteen minutes. It, you telling me it takes four months to get 15 minutes with the doctor? Yeah, well, so he can charge you more. You know, how I had great joy when that was done. My wife had better joy when that was done. 
what was David doing? His men were at war. It was a time of war, Ben, right? What was David doing? Oh, David's lounging around. He's out there. Let me tell you, idleness, and I'll leave you with this, is the devil's workshop. Say, I don't have anything to do. Pick up that Bible and read it. Seek out the word of the Lord and read. Study to show thyself proved unto God. A workman needeth not to shame rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. That word of a hid in my heart, that why? That I might not sin against thee. That Bible's imperative in your life. It'll instruct you. It'll always destruct you if you don't keep messing with it. Because it's going to, see, I love the book because it's not going to say what you want it to say. It's going to tell you what you need to hear. You have to make decisions. There's no copping out on it. The Christian can regain his joy. You want to regain that joy? It's a short thing, but I believe it's a needful thing. So you don't know what I'm going through. Take it to him. He knows what you're going through. He'll help you with it. He'll make you understand why you're going through it. I don't understand uh, why Mark had to go through that thing he had to go through. He'd been battling those knees and, and the stuff all his God had a time. You know what he ended up paying for that thing? I think Jim, $7,500 or something after all the insurance took care of it. And then he said offerings, are people, God's people are helping him. Say, so he came in and preached for five or four or five days. I know, but God's people are helping him. I'm going to tell you something. David knew the only one that could help him was God. The one that saved you, loved you. Many has received him to them be able power to become the son of God. You are a child of God. And I'm going to tell you something. I've watched Grandpa with Evelyn. Grandpa hoards Evelyn until Daddy has to get him. And every time I look at Ben walking around with that little baby in his arms, it makes me think, when I'm hurting, when I'm crying, when things are rough, he comes down, picks me up, and carries me. It's all right. Puts me over his shoulder and says, it's okay. Lo, I'm with you always. He's with me. Brother, I'm just telling you something. There's a lot of things. Uh, preacher, I can't seem to get anybody to talk with me. Let them see Jesus Christ in you. Just let them see him. Enough, they've seen enough of you. They've seen enough of me. Let them see him. Amen. Father, we love you, and we thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for the mercy and, and grace. Thank you, Lord, for this little thing with David and the things he went through. Uh, God, we, we understand David, and he was a man after your own heart, and we understand his position, but we also understand his problem, Lord. He has a serious problem, and I think it's, a problem everybody has. He doesn't know which way to go and how to get the situation. But you do say if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God, whatever it is, whatever we need to do to get closer to you, Lord, I pray today would be the day that we'd let that joy, of your joy, come seeping back out of us again. That we can sing, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Help us, O oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may come pray. Please turn your hymnals to number 442. 442. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O oh earth is wonderful love proclaim hail him hail him highest archangels in glory strength and honor give to his holy name like a shepherd jesus will guard his children in his arms he carries them all day long praise him praise him tell him his Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. 
Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He, our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus, the crucified. Sound His praises, Jesus, who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep, and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with those forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent grace. Lord, we're thankful for this day, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you just uh, help us get back to church, Lord, at the right time. And Lord, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we can lose our joy and that you can give it back to us, God, and that we don't have to lose our joy, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, your long suffering, and for the, your blood, God. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.